hello. Thank you so much. Um, I understand we've got 20 minutes and so I want to make sure that I give you as much information as I can, but also leave some time um, for some questions. Um, so let's get going. My name is Sophie. I am the University Partnerships Manager with FDM and the recruitment team in Australia. Um, and we have a really exciting recruiting um, recruitment program where we launch careers of people who want to start their career in technology. Um, so roughly what I want to cover today is I want to tell you what FDM does, because if we're not a familiar name, that's understandable. We've only been in, this, in the Australian market for about four years now. So we're pretty young in the Australian terms, but we've had 30 years experience in the global terms. So I do want to explain what we do. I then want to get to the recruitment and eligibility criteria so that you know what we're open for. And I want to leave some time for questions. Yeah, because I know you guys have got some good questions and I want to try and answer them live if I can. Um, so who is FDM? What do we do? Um, essentially, we launch careers in tech and in Australia, we are focusing on the graduate market. We do this through a model we call recruit, train and deploy. And now this business model started 30 years ago in the UK. Our head office is in London and we took this business model global. We went across uh, Europe, across North America, more recently into Asia and most recently in Australia and New Zealand. Um, and this is the business model, um, which is kind of different to other graduate programs. And I want to talk to you about what it involves because it actually articulates the journey that you go on should you join the graduate program. So um, what we do is we start in the recruit phase and we cast the net really wide. And when I say really wide, I mean we recruit from every single discipline. All we need is a bachelor degree and we really don't mind what you have a bachelor degree in. Um, so if you have a bachelor's degree in software engineering, super technical, we want to hear from you, absolutely. But if you have a degree from arts, law, humanities, and you've got an interest in tech, we want to encourage you to explore those skills to see if you can upskill personally. It doesn't need to be formal education because what we're looking for is the right attitude and aptitude to launch your career. There are not enough people coming out of university with the right tech skills that industry are looking for. And so FDM is stepping into that gap. We're bringing in people who come from all different backgrounds um, and trying to upskill you so that we can meet that industry demand and so that we can help launch more careers. So through our assessment process, we're looking for the right attitude. That's the mindset, people that are ready to take on challenges, people that are prepared to work in teams, um, resilient people, problem solvers. And then we also look at aptitude. Do you have the aptitude to learn the skills that we're going to teach you? So if you come from a completely non-tech background, we encourage you to upskill in your own time by checking out YouTube, by checking out, you know, skills that your friends have, by getting some work experience, exposing yourself to data, exposing yourself to coding skills to see if it's something that you might have an appetite for. If you do, we might have a job for you. So if we find that you're the right aptitude and attitude, we'll bring you into our program and then we train you. We train you in what we call our academy. It's currently delivered all virtually thanks to the COVID pandemic. It's something that we've decided to retain in our business model and we will be delivering commercially aligned technology pathways. I'm gonna give you a slide of what those pathways might look like, but they span from most technical to more business because there is a huge spectrum of careers that need to be delivered in the tech space. Um, that training lasts for approximately three months and it is absolutely paid. We are bringing you onto an employment program. We are giving you skills that you're then going to use for us out on client site. So we put you on the salary, we pay you full time and we expect you to show up full time, 9 to 5.30, Monday to Friday for the duration of the training. During the training, we'll get to know you, we'll start sending you out for interviews and that's where the fun starts. We deploy you out on client site for two years to be an FDM consultant. So the entire duration of the program is an expectation to commit to FDM for 2.5 years. That includes the training, any potential placement time, and two years out on client site. After those two years out on client site, it's your career, it's your decision where you go next. We're happy to support you. You can stay with FDM, try a different place. Most of our consultants, about 90% transition to the client full-time and that's where they launch their career. But with incredible experience and a fast track specialization, you can go anywhere. 
So that's the business model. I mentioned that we train in all sorts of different um, uh, specializations, and that can range from most technical, software development being our most technical, all the way through to business analytics, project support, risk and compliance. Um, so in our software space, um, they generally come from a bit of a techie background. We definitely have lots of applicants from software engineering, computer science, but also it, we're, we're open to taking applications. Um, often we get people coming from other engineering fields that uh, have the ability to learn how to code. But if you're prepared to put in the work and you, if you're prepared to put in that time and extra study, we can take you from whatever discipline you wanna go into. So really it's about exploring these different pathways. I recommend that you take a screenshot, take a photo, Google some of these fields and see what excites you. If you can start exploring these, if you can start upskilling in these areas in your own time using free resources, never pay for upskilling free resources on Google, there are so many, um, then it's going to make you more employable no matter what you do, I promise. So next up, I wanna talk about recruitment processes and eligibility. So the recruitment process happens all year round. We have, we never close our application. Um, and we have start dates all year round as well. So there's no time where you run out of time. If you finish mid-year, we want to hear from you. Um, if you take a bit of a holiday after you finish studies, we want to hear from you when you're ready to work. Um, so we can take you in, we can take your application whenever you're ready to submit it um, and we can have you started um, within a couple of months of when you submit that application. We can actually start processing your application as early as six months out from your graduation. So if you apply, if this is your your final year and you finish in December, you'll feel free to submit an application. We will start processing from about July. Um, it, will, it will start with a phone screen. You'll get a recruiter um, calling you, checking in to see whether you meet the eligibility criteria and just generally sussing out why you think this is a good fit for you and why you've applied for FDM. If we think you're a good fit from that phase, we'll take um, you to the online um, testing phase where we'll give you a video interview, some questions where you have to record your answers and an online aptitude test. So you'll have a set amount of time to work through some problems to test whether you've got the aptitude for our training. If we see that you've met, met those benchmarks, we'll invite you to assessment center, which is essentially two interviews, one with our sales team who are going to assess your uh, attitude and one with our academy team who are going to assess your aptitude. Um, after that, if we think you're a good fit, we'll make you an offer and we'll put you on a start date. So that being said, eligibility criteria is next. We are open to all disciplines um, and we focus on grads, but we ask, that, ask our grads to be geographically flexible. So we do all of our training remotely. Um, if you want to, um, to complete your training from Perth or Sydney or Tasmania, we really don't mind as long as you show up um, at, with the hours um, 9 to 5.30 um, Australian Eastern Standard Time. Um, but once it comes to being placed with clients, we need to be responsive to the client needs. Most of our clients um, are asking for hybrid models of working, but it means you probably need to be in the city that they're operating out of. And the vast majority of our clients are in Sydney and Melbourne. So we do talk to you about your openness to be in Sydney and Melbourne and understand your preferences. And the more flexible you can be, the more opportunities we have to talk to you about. We also have opportunities open in Brisbane, Canberra, Adelaide, Perth even, Auckland and Christchurch. And we are growing month on month. So we ask you to be open to the different locations that our clients are in and make sure that you talk that through with your recruiter. We ask you to be open to all industries because we, we have uh, clients across banking and finance, professional services, uh, charity, retail, government. Um, we have a huge portfolio of different clients and we're going to be looking at the best fit for you, but we want you to keep an open mind because if you come in with a fixed mindset, I will only go to bank ABC, that's gonna make it really difficult for us and put us in a tricky situation if you want guarantees. So at this stage, we ask you to be really open-minded about where, um, what client that you're looking for. Um, and with 90% transitioning to the client full-time at the end of our program, we think it's a really good statistic of success. We ask you to be um, available and committed to the 2.5 year program. We are not an education provider, yeah? We actively discourage you from using us as an education training provider. We pay you full-time because we expect you to commit to delivering on 
on that work. So we need you to commit to the two and a half years for our business model to work. And we want you to be open about that. So we're transparent about that being part of our structure. And the reason being is that's how we, we have a business model. So um, if you're coming to us to do the training to fast track your specialisation, um, then we really need you to use those skills out on client side. And finally, we need you to have full time working rights for that duration. So if you're not an Australian citizen and you don't have permanent residency, after you finish your, um, after you finish your studies, if you're an international student, we need you to transition onto a visa that gives you post study work rights for a minimum of 2.5 years on a single visa. Visa. that doesn't include a bridging. It needs to be a single visa that covers the 2.5 year working rights. If you are on something for at least 2.5 years and you're ready to apply, we'd love to talk to you. So what are we looking for? If we're open to all degrees, how do you tailor your application? These are the things we're looking for. These are the things that we think make really good um, consultants in our program. So we're looking for you to come with stories in your CV, cover letter, interview um, around being a driven performer. Tell us what motivates you. We're wanting to know that you're a logical resolver. So how do you work through problems and what are your what are some examples where you've worked through problems? We're hoping that you're an opportunity seeker. That means if you have a question, you speak up and ask it. If you have an idea, we want you to come forward and present it. We want you to be looking for answers, for looking for opportunities. So we need you to show initiative, not be someone who just sits back and waits for things to come to them. We need you to be resilient and adaptable because the world of tech is forever changing. Um, and, and that's just a reality of the working world. So we need you to maybe have a bad day, but show up the next day with some fresh energy to try again. And if the goalposts shift, we need you to take a deep breath and see where the next direction is going to be. Um, and a big thing in tech is that nothing gets done in isolation. Nothing. You will have more meetings than you can ever possibly imagine. So we need you to be a relationship builder. We need you to work collaboratively. We need you to be a strong communicator. Um, and so we're looking for people who are being prepared to be part of a team. And finally, being a curious learner is fundamental to going into technology. The learning never stops. It, it's really helpful for you to enjoy the learning process. Um, that can sometimes be hard on the ego because you're constantly having to almost start at the bottom, learning another thing. Um, but that's just part of the course. This is, this is what working in technology is all about. You're learning new things. Things are always evolving. And having the approach that you're curious about learning is going to really serve you. So that's it from my side of things. If you have any questions, I'd love to hear from you. But if you'd also like to um, register your expression of interest to find out more about FDM for us to keep in touch with you, please do scan that QR code because we can tell you about upcoming workshops, coding boot camps and upcoming start dates as well. I'm not sure how much time I have left to answer questions. Plenty, Elliot. eight minutes, plenty of time. Plenty of Yay. time. So um, I'll go through, I'll just go through top to bottom. So what... Um, What's a current tech skill that FDM group kind of look for in an undergraduate? So if you're an undergrad and you're kind of maybe coming into your penultimate years, like what are the things that they should upskill in? I, the three areas, and I say areas because there's little things within them, but the three areas that I recommend every grad, whether you're a tech grad or not tech grad, look into is coding having an understanding of what coding is and maybe even having a dabble, um, data management skills, um, working with different platforms and understanding how data works um, and project management. So project management methodologies and potentially starting to try to use some of those project ma uh, management methodologies in the group work that you might do or progressing through your assignments. Um, they make great stories. Fantastic. Um, and this question's come up a couple of times um, throughout the course of today. So what is okay. FDM's position around the mature age students? Um, mature age students, we don't have a policy uh, around age. Um, it is a program that is aimed for graduates. So I need to be upfront and say that the way this is shaped and the way that this is pitched to our clients is that these are people who are coming out of fresh out of a out of a degree. Um, and so it comes with a graduate salary. 
and um, many mature age candidates who've had previous work experience the graduate salary isn't gonna isn't gonna cut it. It comes with graduate expectations. So we we um, we do this program on scale, and so we aren't able to fine tune and tweak things around individuals' um, schedules and things like that. And as a mature age candidate, that can sometimes be really really difficult. Um, and that's when uh, there might be a misalignment. Um, and it also comes along with you're going to be in a cohort, a session uh, when you're learning, you're in a class cohort of fresh graduates and there might be an age differential. Um, and when you go out to work site, there is an expectation that you're going to be in that same cohort. So we always, if there's any mature age candidates coming through our process, we always talk through those things with them and, and set their expectations and really then listen to have they really understood that expectations and, and are they okay with that? Why do they think that this program is still a good fit? Um, and in some instances, it is absolutely a good fit and we go ahead and in some instances, it's not. So we really try to talk that through, um, but it is a graduate program. So there's graduate, um, expectations. Yeah, fantastic. Um, and we've got a student who is currently studying cybersecurity. So what, what pathway do you reckon that would be, I guess, best suited to for you guys? We do have a cloud and cybersecurity pathway. It doesn't get, it doesn't come up as often. So um, the number of start dates are really an indication of market demand. Um, so we probably run maybe two to three cyber and cloud security, uh, cloud and cyber security start dates a year. Um, and that's throughout the year. Um, whereas software development, for example, we run a, uh, between 15 to 20 start dates. Yep. And each start date would contain about 10 to 15 students in that okay, trainee fantastic. program. Yeah. Yeah, brilliant. Um, now, there's a couple of questions on here that will probably be best answered directly by yourself yeah. after. But this question mm -hmm. has come through. One is around PhD students. I'm assuming that they can join your program. They absolutely can. We talk through the same expectations. Yeah, brilliant. Um, and we've got well, one of the mature age students has asked, like, so it, not not as specialised. So it's more, more of a generalist. So they have had a range of, like, leadership roles that didn't require, like, a specific specialization, but instead had like flexibility around broad mindedness kind of abilities. What, what's your, I guess, your stance on what do you think would be more important for you guys? More important for us, a specialization skills or mindset? Mindset around like, or would, would being more specialist be more, would, we look, would it be more favorable than someone who's got more of a generalist kind of understanding of things? Because it's a grad program, we're not expecting to pay people to be experts. We're going to train you in what you need to be. So for us, it would be the attitude that you come ready to embrace work, ready to learn, ready to take on whatever we're going to give you and, and, and have a positive attitude about it and look for the opportunities. Um, so we wouldn't be looking for specialists. Um, yep. We're looking for passion. So there are a way, it, you, you can always spin a story, right? If you're a specialist in something, spin it to us that it's a, it's a passion and, and, and that's how prepared you're, you're, commit, you're committed to uh, seeing something out. Um, because we want passion and that's more and, and you can see I've translated that into an attitude yeah. whereas if you're a generalist I'm really open and I'm just I'm just hungry for experience again I've translated that into a into an attitude yeah fantastic um, and this is more of a question around um, over in, in, in that first three months so after they go through the training program what what's the what's the process like after they finish that program into getting seconded out into into the, the, I guess a client environment Excellent question. So as early as four weeks into the training, we'll start to match you up with interviews. Um, so basically there's an update um, weekly, sometimes fortnightly from the sales team who work um, directly with the clients and they update the trainees as to which clients um, are coming on board, what their requirements are, what the roles look like. They also get advertised through our Yammer page so that the, the consultants can get kind of quite familiar with them. Um, and then the account managers actually approach um, each class and start to line them up for interviews. Um, the account managers are really experienced and they kind of know their clients very well they know sort of what what fits together but potentially um, sometimes we send uh, consultants out to multiple interviews because we want to find that best fit for both the consultant and the client 
that. Yeah. Um, so that, yeah, there's a there's a, a quite hands on process in finding the best best match. Yeah, brilliant. Um, and one one of the students has asked, and this you might have to go back into your presentation a bit. There was a statistic around ninety percent statistic you mentioned following the program with FDM. I can't remember what that was about. You probably yeah, of course. So I said once. So you've, I, we ask you to commit to FDM for 2.5 years. Yeah, so that's that we're upfront about that. We we really actually need that commitment upfront. Um, and that's why we're going to train you and pay you. So after that, it's your choice where you go next. And the three um, avenues that I gave um, about where you go next would be to return to FDM as a senior consultant and we can renegotiate your contract and send you somewhere else because you might like to try somewhere else. I said that most, 90%-ish, um, will um, transition to the client full-time at the end of that contract. Um, and that's because clients come to us because they like to retain talent. They haven't been able to find the talent in the market themselves. And so they come to us to look for, to try before they buy. And then after two years of solid performance, 90% of the time, um, they want to keep you and the consultant wants to stay and FDM thinks that's a really good launch to their career. Brilliant. Fantastic. Sophie, that's about all we've got time for for the live questions. There's about three questions in there that you could probably ask, um, answer directly. So once awesome. I uh, unspotlight you, you can just jump onto the, um, the Q&A function and answer those directly. But thank Sounds you so much good. for your time again. You're one of my good clients and I've learned a lot about what you guys do again. So it's always really good. So hopefully the students have taken some things out of this as well. Thanks, Elliot. No worries. Thanks, Sophie.